And I didn't even need my reminder slide. I actually remembered to hit record. Okay, so what we're going to do today in this session is we're going to just do one quick bit of admin. Then I want to talk to you about Creative Commons because it seems to be causing some problems for people. And then I'm going to go through and review the work that was submitted for um, us to look at today in this session. So a few of the people who submitted work aren't actually here. So we'll see how we go for time and we might just focus on the work that you guys submitted. So first up, some administration. I just wanted to remind you about the Connected Learning Analytics Toolkit um, and the research project that goes along with it. Um, this is my dashboard on the toolkit from a unit last year. And you can see that there's lots of peaks and troughs in usage. Um, and what this is actually really useful for, for you is to look at how you're contributing to the community and to help you understand the, what the role you play in the community. So there's a bit of background noise, so I'm just going to plug my headset in. Can I just confirm that you guys can hear me okay? Great, thank you. Okay, so your final reflection in the unit, we're going to ask you to kind of quantify um, your, your contribution to the learning community and also to talk about the qualitative aspects of it, so what you actually contributed and, um, and the role you felt you played. So um, if you sign up for this trial, um, you'll have access to all of your data in a dashboard that will allow you to look at um, how your usage tracked across the semester, um, how the whole class is usage tracked. It will allow you to look at um, things related to topics. It'll let you look at a social network analysis to see the connections that you've made. Um, so I think you'll find it really useful for that final blog post. Um, in the week, we look at quantified and connected lives. Kirsty Kitto, who is the lead researcher on this project, um, will come in and talk to us about um, the learning analytics project and do some workshops with us as well. So um, it's a, it'd be great if you could sign up for the toolkit and have a look at it in the next couple of weeks um, ahead of that workshop. So this is the URL to sign up. It's a bit.ly link, so nice and short. Um, and I'll put a link prominently on the home page after class today so that you can um, follow, follow that. Are there any questions about the toolkit? Doesn't look like it. Okay, so I wanted to talk to you about Creative Commons today uh, because we seem to be getting a lot of questions about it and we seem to also be getting um, kind of questions along the lines of why can't I just use images that I find on the internet. Um, and I wanted to get you guys to watch a video today because it provides a really concise overview of what Creative Commons um, actually is and I think you'll find that it's a really useful um, explanation. I'll just grab the link and paste it in the chat for you. So what I'm going to get you to do is just um, click on the link in the chat and go off and watch the video. Um, just watch it till the four minute mark, you don't need to watch past four minutes. Um, but what it does is explains Creative Commons and copyright and it talks through the different licenses to help you understand how those licenses work. So I'm going to paste that link in now um, and you guys can click it and go off and watch that video and I'll see you back here in about four minutes. So just watch it through till that four minute mark.
Okay, so what that video does is give you a, a really concise um, explanation of copyright and creative commons. It's kind of tricky territory and you might have just seen the, the conversation I was having with David in the chat around memes and copyright. Um, you know, there is the law and then there's intention and interpretation and it can get a bit muddy and messy. Um, I've read some really interesting stuff about memes in particular, so I'll um, post an article on the on the unit side about that. Um, but this is really tricky, tricky ground. Um, there is this common misconception that for educational purposes, you can reuse anything that's um, copyright. Um, and that misconception comes from the fact that in America that is the case, but in Australia that's not the case. There is no fair use provision for use for study in Australia. Um, and then there's all the complications around international law and what you can and can't do with stuff that um, might be protected by US copyright law versus Australian copyright law. So it's always just safer to go for something that's Creative Commons licensed. And the beauty of Creative Commons is it lets um, creators control their copyright um, without having to have lots of intervention when people want to ask them if they can reuse something. So it's good for their creative production, um, but it's also really good for end users who want to pick up that content and reuse it. One of the things that's really key to me is the idea of attribution. I'm um, sorry, the idea of um, uh, what they call it, adaptability and remixing. Um, is a, a derivative work, or if I create a PowerPoint and put an image in it that is um, Creative Commons licensed but no derivatives, have I actually created a, a derivative by putting that image into the PowerPoint presentation? Um, and again, I've read some really interesting interpretations of this stuff, but it's really kind of messy territory. So to be on the absolute safe side, I tend to only use images that are either for non-commercial use or just attribution um, full stop. So that means that it's just safe and, and easy that way. And I think this is a really interesting topic because it's something that doesn't tend to get covered a lot in undergrad degrees. Have any of you guys heard about Creative Commons before this unit? Or talked about copyright at all? Oh, you have. Excellent. I'm glad to hear it. My sister is studying education, not at QUT, and I won't mention where. And um, I'm always horrified that, that she's basically told that it's fine to use commercial music in a video or um, there's no kind of regard for the fact that you need to reference images. And I guess um, my kind of interest in this probably stems from the fact that I'm a librarian by trade and so I'm interested in, in these issues. But um, also that I produce a lot of content that I put online and I need to make sure that the content I produce is an infringing copyright. So it's important for you to do that in this unit because your blogs are on the public web, but it's even more important for you to do it in your professional practice because um, possibly what you'll be doing online in, in your professional practice will be much more public than what you're doing here. So um, if you're looking for Creative Commons licensed images, there is a whole bunch of places that you can look. Um, for your first assignment, you're probably going to be looking for icons, um, fonts. Uh, fonts aren't typically Creative Commons licensed. They tend to be just public domain. Um, you might be looking for, um, say, a background image. Or um, when it comes to your blog posts, you might be looking for photos or video or you know, a whole bunch of different stuff. Um, so it, there are particular places you can go to look for stuff. Sharing at the minute, and it tends to cause issues with um, audio quality. So I'll be as quick as I can with this. Um, on the assessment page, um, you'll, or under the assessment menu on the unit site, you'll see a link to referencing and attribution. Um, on that page, I've talked about um, referencing in blog posts, which um, has been really important to date with your blog posts. But I've also talked about attribution, copyright, and creative commons there. And um, at the bottom of the page, I've put some of my favorite sources for creative commons licensed images. Um, so I really like Unsplash. It's a photography website where they load a photo a day. And those are public domain. So you can do whatever you want with them. They're not creative commons licensed with you know, attribution needed. They're just public domain. And that means that you can reuse them even without crediting the author. 
Um, the other place I like to look for Creative Commons licensed images is Flickr, where you can um, limit your search to Creative Commons. And in fact, you can even search for Creative Commons licensed images on the Google image, image search now as well. So you can try that too. But if you're looking for a nice photo, I tend to find the photography websites that have Creative Commons licensed content are better sources for that anyway. Um, and then there is also CC Search, which is the Creative Commons um, search engine on the Creative Commons website. And it targets a whole bunch of different um, search uh, or different databases. So you can um, choose the databases or you can search them all at once. And you can choose whether you need it for commercial purposes or to modify, adapt or build upon. So um, those are just a few little hints there for you on how you can uh, find Creative Commons licensed content. But I guess just most importantly, if you have any questions or concerns as you're looking for content to use on your blogs or your persona poster, please just ask us because we're very happy to um, chat with you about it. Okay, so are there any questions about Creative Commons before I move on to looking at your work? Okay, great, thank you. So for your assignment, I mentioned that it would be a good idea to create a blog post and then link to that post with a QR code. Um, and then you can put all the references for your images and stuff onto that blog post instead of cluttering up your poster. So that might be something you wanna um, do. Okay, so let's have a look at the work that you guys um, Oh, they're like, depending on where you generate them, they're kind of like in perpetuity. I've got them on resources that I created years ago um, and they still seem to be fine. So I would, um, I'll just have a quick search. I can't remember the name of the one I usually use. Hang on a sec. There's just so many of them now. Just trying to see if I can, there's any information on expiration. I just checked the particular tool you're using, but I think you'll find that mostly they don't expire. I know like um, link shortening services, those links tend not to expire either. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of the one I used to use. What was it called? Just give me one second. I'm just doing a quick search. I generally use this one and I don't really have a logical reason for why I use that. Um, oh, hang on a second. It's now, okay, it, it does have a free version still. Um, you can opt into paid versions of them as well, but um, I think they're all pretty much of a muchness. So I wouldn't really worry too much about, about what you want to pick. Cool. Okay, so let's have a look at the work that you guys asked me to review. So first up, just a reminder about the assignment specifications. Um, I'm sure you know this stuff by now. Um, you're going to submit on the 24th of April, um, but I will take submissions up until the, the, up until the end of day for 5 p.m. on the 25th of April, given it's a public holiday, just so you've got a bit more time to work on the assignment. Um, then at the end of that week, we're going to have our exhibition on the cube. And of course, this assignment is worth 25%. If you haven't already watched the assignment overview video that I posted on the assignment page, I highly recommend you do that. It's not particularly short, but it does kind of go through the assignment in great detail. So if you have any questions about the requirements, that's a great place to go. So first up, we're going to look at where will we start? We'll start with your um, persona, Dylan. Okay, so um, Dylan posted his um, persona poster as well as his, um, oh, you're in there, hello, awesome, as well as his um, identity map. So this is the poster here. 
And you can see he's got um, lots of the things that are kind of hallmarks of a persona. There's a photo of him with his name. There is his demographic information, so age, um, gender, uh, his student status and his location. And um, an insightful key quote that says, I love seeing the newest, weirdest or funniest content from around the web and I want to share it with you, which links to his, um, his uh, kind of catch, catchphrase, which is um, the informer. So that's really good. And um, over underneath that, we've got the social networks um, that he uses with percentages under them. Um, so that's uh, really easy to read. Uh, other ways that students have done this in the past include by kind of um, kind of like shading the uh, the icons so that you can get a sense of the um, percentages by looking at the icons. But it's clear as it is, I think. Um, likes and dislikes are there. Um, I'm going to be really super picky, and I'm going to talk to you guys about capitalization briefly. Um, so in your likes and dislikes, Dylan, you, you're using what is called um, title case capitalization, and that's where you capitalize all the kind of main words, excluding things like of and a and the and stuff. Um, but further down, when you're talking about the kinds of things you do, the goals and motivations, you haven't used um, title case. You've used Actually, you've done a bit of both. So the first two are in sentence case and the second two are in title case. So those little details are really um, good things to consider. And especially if you're into graphic design, um, it's good to kind of work through those details. Um, you've got your day in the life, which is great. Um, wants and needs. Um, Yeah, I think this looks really good. Is there anything in particular on the poster, Dylan, that you wanted to get some feedback on? Yeah, I think it's looking good. Um, I One of the things that I'm wondering about is kind of sharing links whether you could talk more about the fact that it's kind of content that you're sharing rather than links. Um, so that, cause it's what you're actually interested in is the newest, weirdest and funniest content. So maybe you can just finesse that um, just a little bit. Um, in some ways your goals and motivations are kind of like, they're like the actions that you undertake rather than your goals and motivations. So um, the first one, the, the sharing content, that's a real, um, a real goal. But what actually motivates you to do those things? What is it that is, um, that's important to you about those things? So just digging a little bit deeper, um, and this is like the analytical stuff rather than just the description. So just give that a little bit more thought. Um, and let's have a look at your identity map. Okay, this looks good. So while we're looking at this online identity map example, yeah, that's okay. You don't need to use a lot of um, networks. What I'm more interested in is what you've done here with the um, overlapping. So what we, when you're using this kind of Venn diagrams where the circles overlap, you need to make sure that those overlapping spaces actually are overlaps. So um, what you've done here is you've kind of overlapped professional and student. So I'm assuming that in that space where it's professional and student, that you're kind of working as a student towards your profession kind of thing. So um, just make sure that where you have the overlaps, they actually are overlaps. And um, I think that looks straightforward here. But sometimes um, I look at them and I'm a bit like, hmm, I'm not sure those things actually do overlap. Um, so good uh, kind of key there. Um, one of the things that happened last year too is that um, the icons for the key become a bit hard to read on the actual um, identity map themselves. Um, so you might like to consider, you've got quite a bit of real estate there, so you might like to consider um, making those, you could actually make the whole Venn diagram bigger and then those icon icons would be bigger too. OK, 
<laughs> yeah, for, is a pain. Unless you're really proficient with it, I think it's quite can be quite um, annoying to use. Um, yeah, you can give examples for what you do in those networks, absolutely. So if you are going to keep your persona poster on the one screen on the cube, you're very welcome to use that other screen for your persona poster if you want to. So you can do it kind of portrait rather than landscape, and that would give you some more space to talk about the, um, the things that you do in those networks. That would be interesting. Cool. I see some typing, so I'll just pause for a minute. I did also want to say, no worries, I did also want to say that last year people did get very good marks um, using uh, just the one screen too, so don't feel pressured to expand it into two screens if you, if you don't think you can um, fill it up. That's all good. And then you can use the second screen for your, your identity map. Okay, there's a close-up of the bottom of Dylan's. I'm going to move on to the next one now, um, just while that typing is happening. Um, guys, at any stage, feel free to dump questions in the chat. Very happy to take them as we work through. Um, this example, I'm not quite 100% sure how to say your name. Is it Farahia? And I'm not sure if you're in the classroom on campus or not, but I'm not, I don't know that you're actually here in the room. Not at campus. Okay. All right, so I'll just have a quick quick look at this one and I won't um, talk about it for too long. So there's two versions here. Um, the one on the left is uh, just arranged a bit differently. Um, the, I think the one on the left is easier to understand. Um, but I think that the, the, the text where there's percentages of um, what happens on the devices is a little bit hard to read. Did any of you guys have some um, comments that you want to make about this one? Do you have any impressions for how far here can improve the poster? Yeah, I like the right layout too. I quite I like the background as well. It's very effective. Um, I do like the quadrant down the bottom the, there's a kind of little square layout of goals, wants, needs, and frustrations. Um, that's quite interesting, but I think it's a, a bit tricky to read. Yeah, yeah. So one of the things that could be done to make that right-hand side more easily readable is um, putting, say, a, a transparent, um, partially transparent circle behind the sections of the poster so that um, it kind of highlights the regions and makes it easier for you to follow um, with your eye. A bit of typing, so I'll just wait for that to come through. Yeah, another screen because there is quite a lot of information there. Yes, yep, black outline and white text, yep. I think there's a lot of the, the good content here. Um, I think could probably get to a bit more depth. A bit of the depth is missing on the one on the right. So the wants and um, goals, uh, they seem to be missing. So I think that needs to come back in, whether it's on a different layout or on a separate screen. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. And this one is Fatima's. Now, um, one of the things I wanted to highlight at this point is that I think some of the ones that came in um, for review today were actually not in the right dimensions. The proportions are wrong. So you can see this one is the full poster on the left and it's quite squishy, squished, um, it's quite narrow. And I don't think those dimensions are actually correct. So make sure you're using the correct dimensions that are specified on the assignment page, otherwise, um, your poster won't look great on the cube and you might be missing real estate that you can use. So my comments on this one is that 
Um, I think there's uh, too much information in small regions on the screen. So I, you know, the issue with the last one where the regions kind of weren't um, defined, made it harder to follow. Here they're defined by boxes and, and, um, and images, but it's quite condensed and quite hard to read. And yeah, there are lots of different styles in there as well. Um, so some nice um, aspects to it. I get the impression that Fatima has four children. Fatima, are you in the classroom? Okay, cool. All right, um, but uh, my kind of general feedback is that there's a lot squished into small spaces. So here um, on this area here where we're looking at the, um, in the yellow area towards the top of the screen, so many little icons and the text is quite small. Yes, so those dimensions are, no, it's pixels. Um, if you're using PowerPoint, there is actually a template there, so you don't have to worry about the dimensions at all. Okay, so obviously this one isn't done because there's still um, there's still bits of space to fill in. Um, but my general feedback here is to simplify and um, try not to cram so much into small spaces. One strategy for making this doable would be to use two screens instead of the one screen, um, which would allow you to fit more information in. Okay, next up we've got Irvin. Irvin, are you in the classroom? Okay, alrighty then, so let's have a quick look at Irvin's. Um, Irvin has got good information in terms of having, uh, he's got his type there as the observer. His um, key statement is, uh, social media plays an important role in building and maintaining my connections. It is a pathway to connect with the newly met people while keeping in touch with the existing ones. Um, so from that and from his um, type, I get the impression that he likes to kind of uh, watch rather than engage. Um, so that's interesting, although I think the observer aspect doesn't really come through in the key quote to, this, to the extent that it might. So that's um, a bit of feedback for you guys to consider. Um, make sure if you're representing yourself as, an, as a particular type that that is reflected in your key quote um, because a, a statement like the observer it doesn't, you know, it implies that you, you're just watching, not doing. But then there's this kind of incongruence with the key statement because they're talking about connecting, which isn't really observing. So just make sure that those two things complement each other and provide um, a really good overarching view of you as a person. Um, so we've got the social platforms there represented as coloured icons. Now, this is an example of how you can use lots of colour and um, it not look busy and cluttered because the icons themselves are very simple and the color values are similar. So the intensity of the color is similar. Um, the, I find this one in the, um, a little bit difficult to read. I think that there can be some work around that, that aspect. Um, and Irvin's also noted, noted here that he's got um, more things that he needs to add in like likes and dislikes, but he's starting to get that together. So I like the about me section. Um, one thing I do like here is the clarity of those headings on the individual sections. It's very, um, very clear what those sections are. Do any of you guys have any feedback on this one? Yeah, looks good so far. It's coming together. Yeah, I like the chalkboard effect too. One of the things that I will just mention is I have a real like for very fine fonts and what you'll notice on my uh, slides is that um, when I'm working with a, whoops, see Daisy, when I'm working with a black background like this, I always go for a bolder font to make sure it's readable. So <clears throat> if you are walking, working with a chalkboard font, just make sure that it is definitely legible and that the font is not too small. Okay, so that was Urban. Let's move on to the next one, which is Alistair. Are you in the classroom, Alistair? <clears throat> Great, excellent. Okay, so this is the overarching view, and then I've zoomed in a bit on the next screen. 
Um, so we've got a bio section in the top left-hand corner. Um, there's a picture uh, at the top, uh, like a profile picture, which is really evocative because it it clearly demonstrates that like virtual reality is a is something that's important. And um, if that's not the case, if virtual reality isn't particularly important, um, then I think that maybe rethink that that photo a little bit, or um, it could also be something about anonymity as well. So I'm not quite sure what what the deal is with that. But if you could um, talk that through a bit in your poster, that'd be great. Um, the image under profile picture, is that an image that you use on forums or what, where does that come from? Okay, cool. So what I would love to see with those two images, which you've started to get at here but haven't quite finished getting at, is the idea that you've got this dual identity. I'm assuming that's what you're getting at. Tell me if I'm... Um, Tell me if I'm off the mark. Um, but if that is the case, then I would say let's play that up and talk about um, and talk, you know, kind of highlight that. So um, you're the forum moderator, um, but you've also got this these two pictures here. So you could actually say something underneath them about having a dual identity, and you could maybe even do that like through having an icon of a person and and kind of splitting it down the middle in colours or something. I don't know. Um, but it would be good to kind of play that up because I think that's obviously quite important here. Um, so what I like is that you haven't been afraid to use text. Um, my concern is that I think some of this text is going to be a bit too small um, and that the white might be a bit hard to read on the kind of the diagonal lines on the background. So I might just want to give that a bit of thought. Um, let's zoom in, have a closer look. Um, so you've got the kind of needs represented with the um, clipboard and the ticks, which I like. I love the motivations and frustrations images. Um, those, are, those are really cool and very appropriate. Um, troublemaking users. Okay, this is good. I like the content you've got there a lot. I'm going to tell you something a bit naughty, but I think that it's okay to do. Um, you have got the Creative Commons, um, the Creative Commons attribution on your images. You've kept it kept it intact when you downloaded it from the Noun Project. My view is that you can cut that off because you are actually going to attribute it elsewhere on the poster. Now, if you were putting it on the web, I would say make sure you attribute it in context. But because we're doing this in this particular environment where you've got the interactivity element where you can scan that QR code, I think it's safe for you to cut it off. So I'm not sure. Um... Oh, great. Thanks, David. That's good to know. Yeah, it's always just been my interpretation. They haven't always done that. They only brought that in about a year ago, and I find it quite annoying. Um, I don't have them on my because I paid pay for the premium subscription. So I've never kind of really looked into cutting them off, but I think that that is, is definitely legit. Um, okay, let's move to the next bit of the poster. So um, the 33% is a bit tricky to read on that, on that bar graph, so I'd probably just um, give that a little bit of thought. Um, yeah, I'm just looking at your identity map in more detail. Uh, that's great, David. Thanks for posting that. So you can chop that off as long as you attribute somewhere else. Okay, so here's my feedback on your identity map. What I really like is that you've actually really thought about your different identities online, and um, I think that's really good. A couple of things that I would suggest. Um, if you're going to use the one screen, you might like to think about using the second screen for your identity map to give you some more space in both, particularly because your um, your identity map is complex. Um, I think I would probably say 
with the icons that you've got representing the different personality types, I would say either simplify them so that they're kind of the same types of icons, or you could even potentially remove them because your identity map is so complex. Um, you could take them off the actual circles and maybe put those icons um, at the right hand side next to where you've got your little key there. Um, so that could work. Um, one other way to make that key um, easier to interpret would be to like put a bar of the corresponding color behind it so that you can, so that I can just go, oh, that's red and then look across to the key and see that that's red or so. Um, so that's just one suggestion there. But I think your content is coming along really well. Um, the I just wanted to give everyone an opportunity to see if it's, yeah, I think move, yeah, move the icons to the right hand side. Agreed, yeah, definitely. So move the icons across to where you've got that key on the right hand side. And you could also, if you want, put a bar of the corresponding color between, behind each item on the key. Not sure if that, you know, totally up to you if you wanna do that. So I just wanted to throw over to you guys. Do you guys have any feedback you want to give Alistair? Bit of typing happening. Yeah, the bio part could be icons if you want if you want to go that way. Um, I think the it's quite a texty poster which is absolutely fine um so if you're going to stick with the text then stick with the text but you could go really one of two ways with it you could do it as a you know keep it as text or put more icons in there really it's um up to you um one of the things to think about with icons just in general for everyone is the visual weight so for example and i don't mean to pick on you alistair sorry um the so the, the gamer icon is quite, the lines are quite thin and there's a lot of white space in there versus say the student icon, which is quite visually heavy because it's all black. So one of the things I, I do to try and um, get some sameness happening is if I have got one icon that's very black, like the student one, then I'll go and look for a game, a, a controller icon that is also black to balance that visual weight and to keep it kind of, um, looking very similar. Um, I think it's really interesting here that Steam is disconnected from the other parts of your identity. That's a very interesting thing that um, I think it would be good to kind of explore a little bit in just a kind of small textual statement if you can fit it in somehow. Okay, um, so the next up, Daniel had a list of things that he's going to include in his um, poster. No worries. Um, so he's got the kinds of usual things we'd expect. Um, don't have a type yet there for Daniel. Is Daniel in the room? No, here. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so some of the things you, you'd um, expect. Um, so he, here's a good one about goals. So he, he has a goal of to create more and consume less. So that's kind of more like a kind of motherhood statement about how he wants to be behaving in social media. So that whole, um, that's quite goal folk, goal oriented um, rather than being kind of a way that he uses social media. So you can see here his motivations are similar as well. Um, keep up to date with uni groups, keep in touch with friends, check design groups, procrastinate. That's probably my top use, watch new game footage. Um, so those things are, um, things that actually, actually some of those are, uh, some of those actually are things you would do, behaviours rather than motivations. Um, maybe keeping in touch with people is more of a motivation. Um, procrastination is probably a motivation. So just try and differentiate between what actually motivates you to do things, why do you do things, versus what are you actually doing. So you might, for example, um, use Instagram to follow brands right? And what's the motivation for that? Well, the motivation is that you want to keep on top of the latest brand, the latest developments in, um, I don't know, shoe brands or something. Um, so there's a difference between what you actually do and why you do it. 
And what we're really interested in in these personas is digging into the why. Why do you do what you do? Um, because that, those are the insights that help us to understand how people actually use social technology or any technology for that matter. It's getting to the why. And the why is the higher order thinking analysis stuff that um, is going to get you a really good mark, more than the description. Oh, you couldn't view the recording from last week. Did anyone else have any trouble with the recording? Okay, cool. All right, I'll double check it and um, let me know if you still have problems. Okay, so next up we've got Cassidy. Cassidy, are you around in the room? Nope. <laughs> okay, cool. I find it hilarious that people sent stuff for review, but they're not here. Um, but that's okay. It gives us something to talk about. Um, so here we go. On the left-hand side is the whole poster, and then I'm zoomed in a little bit on the right. A um, couple of quick impressions about this. Obviously, it's not finished. There's um, still some information missing. Um, I always like use of some kind of graph to show proportions of time spent on particular activities. Um, so that it, at a glance, you can see um, what's going on there. In this case, the, it's the outline of the circle that shows you the, the um, proportion of time spent. I think this would be much more immediately, um, uh, immediately comprehensible if it was actually shading the, the circle rather than the outline. I'm um, not sure what you guys think about that too. Um, so it's missing some information. There's not a whole lot on here yet. Um, so I'll, I won't spend too much more time on it. But just one thing I will point out is that the, um, the map is yeah, the, the kind of text that says Indonesia is very small. Uh, and so that might need to be addressed on this one. Yellow is a color that people are scared to use too. So it's nice to see a yellow poster. Now, I think that's the last one. It is. So, Yasuta, is that, is that how you say your name? Yasuta? Sort of, maybe? I'm terrible with pronunciation. Okay, no dramas. So, what you've got here is um, you're a lurker. Um, so, just as I mentioned earlier, the link between your type and your key quote isn't immediately obvious to me. So um, it doesn't tell me that you, you know, it doesn't, I, I, could, I could think maybe that you're watching and lurking rather than um, kind of being active about this kind of information. But just make sure that those, those two things grow, grow together and complement each other. Um, Nice use of icons. I'd suggest, yeah, that the shadow on the quote is quite hard to read. Read. I don't mind it on the lurker because I think it like, although I think um, it, it makes it sound a bit, makes it read a bit sinister that it's um, the way it's got that shadow. I don't know, but I think yeah, the the shadow on the the key quote is quite difficult to read. I like where you're going with the dots element as a, as a um, divider between parts of the content. I think that's quite effective. Um, and I'm guessing that with the magnifying glass, you're going to talk a little bit about searching and, and stuff. Yeah, a closer drop shadow could work. That's good feedback in general, I think. Yes, yeah, Suta, are there any particular questions that you have about the poster that you want to ask? Oh, you haven't used social media before. That's really interesting. So don't feel that you have to make it up, right? Instead of talking about um, what you haven't used before, sorry, instead of kind of trying to quickly learn how to use social media and create accounts everywhere, why don't you make your um, poster about why you don't use social media and why you haven't used it to date rather than um, you know, trying to become a social media user for the purpose of the poster. I think that could be really, really interesting because we have to think about non-users as well as users. Non-users, um, 
you know, they're, they're people that we can't reach. And so if we can think about what they, how they experience social media or don't experience it, I think that's very powerful. <laughs> the Luddite. <laughs> yeah, something along those lines. But, I mean, I have lots of students in my master's course who don't use social media before they come to the degree. And I'm always really interested in their motivations um, for not using it. And um, I'm also always really interested in converting them through the course of the semester and getting them to become social media users. But I think um, it is really interesting to think about this. Um, Non-users are really hard to access when you want to profile them because they have no investment in you or your product or what you're doing. So I've done a lots of um, non-user work. Well, not lots, but I've done some non-user work for libraries, trying to find out why people don't use libraries and how they can get them in. And it's always virtually impossible to recruit participants in that research because they have no interest in the library because they don't know what it can do for them. So pretty interesting. Yeah, yep, definitely. So you can talk about the ways you communicate and stay in touch as you know, versus the way people who use social media would do it. I think it would make a really interesting case study. Um, the other thing, if you find that it's too difficult to do that, um, you could always use someone else as the basis for your persona poster. That's okay too. Cool. Okay, so that's the last of the things that were submitted for feedback. Um, what I'd really like to do now is just give you a couple of minutes to ask any questions you've got about the assignment. Is there anything you want that's not clear or you want to know that I can help you with? Oh, hang on a second. All ah, right, yours came in after nine after nine, so I'd already made the PowerPoint. Um, let me just stop sharing and load it in, it won't be set. No, that's okay. I just missed it because it was um after I did it. No, you don't need to submit any accompanying documentation other than your reference list. So, um, and I would suggest you do that in the blog post. Last year I asked people to write a critical reflection as well, um, but the assignment was worth more and I don't want you to have to do that level of, of work. Oh, good questions, okay. Um, so, First up, let me look at this poster and then I'll go through the other questions in the chat. Keep writing the questions in and I'll get to them as we work through. All right, so here we go. This is um, Yaman's about, uh, and the social mum, that's interesting. Um, and so some of the same sorts of comments that I've made before around um, you've got the, you've got lots of the key information here. So just thinking about how you present that in a way that is um, really easily visually identifiable. So you, might, you could probably use some, um, you could probably use some something like a, a, an image of a goal against goals to help people read and understand that. Um, so just a few elements that might help you to, um, to help your reader to really get a quick impression about what you um, what you do in social media. Okay, nice of you to reference my study, but you don't absolutely have to do that. Um, so, oh, I like this kind of, um, I like this uh, continuum of least to most used plums. I think that's really interesting. I haven't seen that before. So, um, that's cool. And here's an idea for how you might be able to make this even more easily intelligible. You could put um, least used in red and most used in green so that when people glance at it, they kind of get this impression. Um, through the colour. Um, really interesting things that you've included down the bottom here. Um, I think you could probably simplify the design in some ways. Um, I would suggest that you focus on getting the information ready and then um, try to come up with a cohesive design all at once. I think those feet are baby feet. Is that right, Yemen? 
Cool. So really good point. The icons you use need to be intelligible to, to everybody. Um, and so you need to make sure that the icon you pick makes sense to other people. So you might want to get just someone else to have a quick look at it and sense check that for you. Um, I like that you've got the interest there. I really like that you've got the personality there as well. So that helps people to understand um, how you operate. I think that's really useful. Um, so obviously you haven't finished. Uh, I would just suggest adding some more images through that middle section and thinking about how you can simplify the design. I, I like the um, person you've got on your profile photo too. That's cute. Um, you, it, you can use a cartoon if you want to rather than a new person, a, a real person. Okay, so let me just go back through the chat and see what questions I've missed while I've been rabbiting on. Hang on a sec. Alrighty. Oh, so the recordings of each week's class are on the class page for that week. So to, to access those, um, just go to the weekly learning resources and click on class. Um, is there anything particular we have to do if we do two screens? Um, yes, if, you, if you're doing two screens, can you add um, the number that you want to go first? So one and two at the beginning of the file name and that will just help me to uh, get them in the right order when I send them to the cube people. How to incorporate emotional and psychological factors. These are things like your personality, what frustrates you, what drives you, what's important to you. Um, think about, you know, the idea of um, needs and wants and, you know, um, these things can be difficult. So you might need something but not necessarily want it or you might want something but not need it. So thinking through some of the – this is about the – going beyond the surface level. So don't just tell me what you do, but tell me why you do it. That's where the psychological, emotional um, factors come into play. Okay, so the next question was about um, name and student number in small text somewhere on the poster just for reference. Um, if it doesn't compromise your design and you're happy to do that, yep, that'd be great. But it's not strictly necessary because we'll, we will work off the file names when we're, when we're marking. Um, and hopefully you're all using your real names on your persona posters. So hopefully we'll see that there as well. Yep, so the QR code thing, write a blog post with your links for your references and your citations and then post the QR code onto your poster. Yeah, the top graphic looks really good, I, I agree, and the continuum is, is really useful. Uh, Yaman, you said, is the day clear? I'm not quite sure what you meant. Oh, right, okay, I thought you meant, like, is the weather clear? And I was thinking, um, I think we're in the same city. Oh, I missed that bit, okay, great. Yeah, it's very clear. So what I would suggest here to help simplify this is um, to use maybe one colour for your icons um, so that you, so that it's just simplified as well and so it's not um, too busy, I guess. And, and um, keep in mind the thing I mentioned before about visual weight and using like icons that are very dark versus icons that are very light. Um, I'm going to post some design tips on the blog. I wanted to see your drafts before I did that, so I'll post some of those for you and you can have a look at those. And then those of you who are designers, you can add more to that as well. So the important thing to remember that is that both elements of this assignment are really, um, are really important, the, the design and the content, so you need to get, to get that in there too. Yeah, it is a good clear day in the life and I definitely know what you're doing at the particular times of day and um, you know where you're engaging in those times. And you go to bed very late and get up early. <laughs> Good on you, I couldn't do it. Okay, so yep, 
with the Echo 360 embeds, you need to log in with your QUT username and password um, because those are on hanging off the Blackboard site. So what, what I do is this class will be on the YouTube channel because I'm recording in Adobe Connect, but on campus I use Echo 360 to record. And so those recordings end up in Echo 360. Do you guys want me to pull them out and put them on YouTube? Is that easier for you or are you happy enough to access them on Echo 360? So it won't be consistent unless I put them all on YouTube because this one, for example, can't go on Echo 360. I'm definitely happy to put them on YouTube, just not sure what your preference is. Yep, either way I can embed it. Oh, right, I see what you mean. Yeah, I can always embed the video. That's no drama. Uh, I don't even mind, you know, downloading it and putting it on YouTube. I just wasn't really sure what you guys prefer. Like some students would prefer to download the file so they don't like me putting it on YouTube because then they can't download it. Not legally anyway. Yeah. I mean, my personal preference is to watch things on YouTube. Okay, look, I'll pull them down and I'll throw them all on YouTube each week and that way you'll get an alert in your, um, or it'll come up in your YouTube feed. Cool. So that's really all I wanted to cover unless there are any other questions about the assignment. It's coming, to, these are coming together really well and I'm looking forward to seeing them all done. Cool. Thank you for self-organising in the classroom to join in. It was great to have you guys here as well. And if there aren't any more questions, I will log us off. Um, don't forget you can always ask anything you like in the forums or on the actual assignment page and we'll get back to you as quickly as we can on those. Um, also just a heads up that I'll be doing some work on the side over the weekend to try and resolve the comments issue. So hopefully I'll get that sorted quickly. Yeah, look guys, you can all put any drafts you want up on your blog at any stage. Just tag them with persona poster progress and then they'll appear in the, the feed so that everyone can, can look at them together. Persona poster progress, I'll just type it in the chat. I'll just show you what happens when you do that. Give me one second. Oops, you can all see my email. That's a bit annoying. Okay. Um, okay, so over on the right-hand side of the screen here, I've got this little um, region that says Featured Content Persona Poster Progress. If you click on that link... you will see all the posts that everyone has made with that tag, which currently amount to zero. So there's just my posts there. But if you do want to post a draft of your persona poster, um, you can do that by putting it on your blog using um, using that, that tag. Now, just I want to note that um, we can't look at every single draft and we're not going to go through every draft that you put up. We've put that um, section there for you guys to look at each other's work and share. Where we can, we will um, make comments, but we just can't get through everyone's because there's 75 of you and uh, it's just not possible. So pop them up there, we'll comment on them where we can. You can comment on each other's and give each other feedback. Um, and yeah, that's it. If you have any specific questions, you can post them in the forum. Um, and yeah, I think that's all. Next week's class will just be a drop-in session because I know everyone is going to be preoccupied with the assignment. So it'll just be a time when I'm sitting here in Adobe Connect where you can drop in and ask me any questions that you want to ask about your assignment or show me any work you've got.
No, we don't give you feedback on your weekly activities. We've given you feedback on the first activity that you posted. So that was a one-off to help you with um, creating your posts. And then you will be getting your post marked shortly in a couple of weeks. And I'll remind you of that when it's coming up. You lose 6.6 .6 marks if you miss a post. So don't miss a post. We hate deducting marks. It's awful. So what we'll do is mark your... Well, if you're, gonna, if you're having problems in advance, just shoot me an email and we can talk about an extension. Um, I'm happy to be flexible, but just don't miss it. Just plan in advance and talk to me. So shoot me an email, Zach, and we'll discuss it. Cool. I hate deducting marks for late, late submissions, especially when we can avoid it. It's kate.davis at QUT. And yes, yes, Lucia, if you up, upload your poster and tag it with that tag, then you um, it will appear in that, that stream. And yet you only need to do five play and share activities across the whole semester. So you do every reflect activity and you pick five play and share activities to do. If you do them all, that's going to help you with your contribution to the learning community and your mark for that participation component. No, five play or share. So five in total and they can be either play or share. And they're really easy, the play and share things. They're actually probably a good idea for you to do as a way of exploring that week's content um, because it'll help you to go and find something related to that and either share it or do something related to the content and share it. Okay. All right, that's it. I'm going to log off because I told you guys we'd only be here till midday. Um, post in the forums if you need anything else and have a great weekend. Don't work all weekend. I'm not. This is the first week in a long time I'm having a weekend off. I'm very excited. Okay. Bye, guys.